Hi, how are you doing this fine Monday morning? I hope you've had a start, a great start to, to a great week ahead. I wanted to read some uh, scriptures out of the book of Esther. There's a man named Haman who gets um, quite a bit prideful and uh, focused just as on, on himself and not on anyone else or on the Lord. So we're going to be reading right now out of Esther chapter 3 and I'm going to start with verse 1. After all this took place, King Ahasuerus honored Haman, son of Hamadatha the Agagite. He promoted him in rank and gave him a higher position than all the other officials. The entire royal staff at the king's gate bowed down and paid homage to Haman because the king had commanded this to be done for him. But Mordecai would not bow down or pay homage. Mordecai was a Jew but he loved God, so he wasn't going to bow down to anyone but God. The members of the royal staff at the king's gate asked Mordecai, Why are you disobeying the king's command? When they had warned him day after day, and he still would not listen to them, they told Haman to see if Mordecai's actions would be tolerated, since he had told them he was a Jew. When Haman saw that Mordecai was not bowing down or paying him homage, he was filled with rage. It made him very angry, and when he learned of Mordecai's ethnic identity, Haman decided not to do away with Mordecai alone, just a simple, uh, just to simply um, punish him. He wanted to punish all Jews. He set out to destroy all Mordecai's people, the Jews, throughout Ahasuerus' kingdom, which wasn't good. It made him angry at all Jews, which wasn't wasn't right at all. Now we're going to flip over to chapter 5 and start in verse 9. Now um, Mordecai realized what he was going to do. So because Esther was a Jew, he was going to have Esther um, talk to the king about this. Um, so Esther had had fasted and prayed, and we'll probably talk more about her uh, another time because there's another something else to learn about that. So what we're going to do is um, talk about... Uh, what what how this was going to take place and what happened in the end, Haman. The king commanded, hurry, get Haman so we can do as Esther had requested. So the king and Haman went to the banquet Esther had prepared. While drinking the wine, the king asked Eth Esther, whatever you ask will be given to you, whatever you want, even to half the kingdom will be done. Esther answered, this is my petition and my request. If the king approves of me, and if it pleases the king to grant my petition and perform my request, may the king and Haman come to the banquet I will prepare for them tomorrow, I will do what the king asks. That day Haman left, Haman left, full of joy and in good spirits. But when Haman saw Mordecai at the king's gate, and Mordecai didn't rise or tremble in fear at his presence, Haman was filled with rage towards Mordecai. Yet Haman controlled himself and went home. He sent first friends and his wife, Zeresh, to join him. Then Haman described for them his glorious wealth and his many sons. He told them, all how the king had promoted him in rank and given him a high position over the other officials and the royal staff. What's more, Haman added, Queen Esther invited no one but me to join the king at the banquet she had prepared. I am invited again tomorrow to join her with the king. Still, none of this satisfied me since I see Mordecai the Jew sitting at the king's gate all the time. That's all he could focus on was that one thing. Now, you know, when there's a law, you should obey the law. But Mordecai wasn't going to obey the law because he wasn't going to bow to anyone except for God. But all all Mordecai, all Haman could focus on was Mordecai, and it made him angry. He wasn't focus, focusing on the Lord or think of it, anyone else but himself. So as it turned out, um, Esther did tell uh, the king what was going to happen. And... Um, the king the night before see god god interceded for him the night uh in chapter 6 verse 1 that night sleep escaped the king so he ordered the book recording daily events to be brought and read to the king they found the written report of how mordecai had informed on on big thana and teresh two eunuchs who guarded the king's entrance when they planned to assassinate king the king, I, I, I'm not having a difficult saying his, difficulty saying his name. The king inquired, what honor and special recognition have been given to Mordecai for this act? They said nothing. Well, he asked Haman, um, 
What should be done for the man the king wants to honor? And Haman thought it was actually him. Again, he's focusing on himself, and he's not focusing on anything else or anyone else or the Lord or at all. Um, so he said, for the man the king wants to honor, give them, have them bring a royal garment that the king himself has worn and a horse the king himself has ridden, which has a royal diadem on its head. Put the garment and the horse under the charge of one of king's, the king's most noble officials. Have, the clo have them clothe the man the king wants to honor. Pray him on the horse through the city's square and proclaim before him, This is what is done for the man the king wants to honor. So the king told Haman, Hurry and do that for Mordecai, which kind of made me chuckle because he hates Mordecai. Now he has to honor him. Um, so in the end... Um, the king, this is in chapter seven, the king and Haman came to the feast with Esther, the queen. Once again, on the second day, while drinking the, the, the wine, the king asked Esther, Queen Esther, whatever you ask will be given to you. Whatever you seek, even to half the kingdom will be done. Queen answered Esther, if I have obtained your approval, my king, and if the king is pleased, spare my life. This is my request and spare my people. This is my desire for my people. And I have been sold out to destruction, death and extermination. If we had merely been sold out as a male, female slaves, I would have kept silent. Indeed, the trouble wouldn't be worth burdening the king. The king spoke up and asked Queen Esther, Who is this, and where is this one who would devise such a scheme? Esther answered, The adversary and enemy is the evil Haman. Now, Haman was terrified. Now, the night before, what, what I didn't read was that, that Haman's friends had suggested he make very high gallows so that they could hang Mordecai on it. He can ask the king the next day if Mordecai could be hung. Um, so, uh, at this point, Haman was completely terrified. Then, uh, king steps out of the room and comes in to see Mordecai falling on the couch and with his head in, in the queen's lap. He, he wasn't trying to do anything. He was just terrified. But the king basically fifth flipped out and Haman had to be hung so in today's time we this wouldn't happen to us that that's kind of silly we don't kill people for those kind of things anymore we have laws to protect us but what I'm really talking about is the spiritual death that takes place when we take our eyes off of the Lord off of Jesus off of God and we put our eyes on ourselves on what we want or what issues we have in our life and um, so then we begin to spiritually die, which isn't fun. All, all of last year was that for me. I was going through a lot, and maybe one day I'll share that, but today's not the time. But I was going through a lot, and I was focused on what I wanted and what my situation was like and how everything was bad. And I took, took that focus off of the Lord and made it, put it back onto me. And so the, And I really struggled because I wanted the focus to be on God, but I was having such issues with that. And um, so I just kept... Pushing, 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 and God said, give me one week. Give me your focus for one week. I did that, um, but I, I was doing good. By Thursday, I had a, I had a little a little uh, step back, but uh, I, I quickly moved forward, and my life has been different since then. A, f a few rough times, but I'm not where I want want to be, but I'm not where I was either. So I just want to encourage you to just put your focus on God and um and he will take you so much further than you could ever thought. His plan is so much greater than our plan. And we'll be the happiest when we're following him. So have a great week. I know this was kind of long, but I really wanted to share all those scriptures so you could kind of get a good gist of the story. So, But I will try to keep these down under five minutes. Thank you and have a great week.